a lowly traveler, and welcome to my humble abode. Feel free to rest your feet and warm up your bones while we wait for the storm to pass. And in the meantime, why not a story? But be warned, for the faint of heart might not be able to withstand the horrors within. He walked in around the Ides of March. He was just another lost soul looking for his path forward. He asked for guidance, knowing I had traded these roads before and found me happy to oblige. Oh, how naive I was, thinking it would be an easy endeavor. His rank, 169. <laughs> nice. Not the freshest of recruits and just a step away from a very important milestone. Lucy Lucia level and the Dark Ops and Cap would bring him an immense boost in power, but he has to get in first. His fire, not but a smoldering ember the intensity of which is left at the mercy of a green monster. Zeta, Storm and Icarus being its brightest peaks, with Satyr and Neza offering niche options. It looks like the tide brought him some good options for water at least. Zeta, Europa, Gwyn and Anila all work well together, while Wamdus will be taking a slot for hard content. The lack of zodiacs is quite unsettling, but fate has still to put its last word in. Next is Earth, and it would appear this element too has been mostly pushed towards normal attack damage. Anthuria, Amelia, Uriel, all characters with double strike, while Alexio can guard the rear. Enneads and Diaspora favor charge attacks though, so lining up work for Octo would not be the worst idea. With the wind blowing strong, with Narmea and Vampy at its core, all that's missing is a strong buffer. Rayer could hold that spot temporarily, but he will have to be replaced eventually by Korwa, Grandivia, or Neon. Then, Vira. The more I look at that level 1 Vira, the more I feel her gaze pierce my soul. She can be an invaluable asset and need to be brought up yesterday. Dane goes for you, not you, 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 the fox, Raziel, and to a lesser extent, Grea. Lastly, Dark, and as I stare into the abyss, a level 1 Ilsa stares right back. Why, I was left to ponder, does this man hate damage? At least Leech is here, and the absence of the Wedge of Death can be filled by Tira, Kolulu, Eustace or Toga. Overall, he did not look too ill-equipped to face the challenges ahead, but as we all know, a collection is only half the preparation. On top of it, you're going to need a grid, and nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to lay my eyes on. Oh, ancient XX, getting uncapped one at a time and all at max skill level. A soothing sight, as they will be the core of this element. Even more joyful was to see a fully leveled up Seraphic. Clearly, some effort went into this. The daily Xeno fights will provide a good AX for that Ifrit X eventually, while the Dark Purpose is currently waiting on its fourth turn cap. A Bahamut weapon and a choice of Rise of the Beast Gun, X or Shiva Staff can fill the rest. Looks like the Magna to grind is still on though. Two Shiva Staffs and two or three Colo Staffs can be helpful options, while two Shiva Swords will come in handy for the HP they bring. When it comes to Atom, two weapons each, for different situations. What dark facts have you allowed yourself to be entangled in? Sigurd's bows? Pimbles? In the year of our lord 2024? I see an ancient Oberon in your inventory. Water should go the same way as fire with four of them. Darkopus, Zeno, Seraphic. Bahamut. The last slot being flexible between Europa Hub or Ability's Fist if fate sees it fit. That is, before the hunt on the Draconic Jellyfish begins, at which point two over spears will have to find a way in this grid. I would also discourage trying to farm Columbus, as they will be replaced by Schrodinger's in the future anyway. I see an Exospear. That's good. 
even without its full awakening, it should still serve you fine for the time being. The Alexial Axis or Max Crit as a base free game, while the rest will be left to Yggdrasil Souls or Alexial Katanas. Another important slot goes to the Medusa Ha. The double attack skill is really nice and the double attack down is negligible. Then it will be up to Rest of the Beast for its two weapons. And then it struck me. A simple glimpse of that horror was enough to make my soul howl in agony. It's a death grid, his words still echoing in my head. I felt as if my flesh was being ripped apart, as if a dagger enchanted with the darkest of magics was making its way straight through my ribs. Where to begin? I wondered, still in shock from witnessing this cursed sight. This sky piercer? Maybe still usable. The Ewea Peaks? Still cool. The Dark Corpus only needs some work, and the Ultima Fist? Honestly, not the worst of picks. A small glimmer of hope emerged, but it was soon extinguished by the complete lack of grand weapons. No Cleums, no Ewea Daggers, no a single Kaguya one. The entire element relied solely on two show fists, on to which I'm sure Gold Bars had been consumed. As my soul kept sinking deeper and deeper into a pit of despair, the possible options kept dwindling. Then a scratching sound from the back of my head, as an evil voice began whispering, Just tell him to money spark six times. After all, what are $3,600 compared to the glory of a wind lord? There, I realized I had sunk to the bottom. It may be a way steal, but it would take time, patience, and quite a bit of luck. Six sparks are a lot, but even free-to-play players can have access to around four per year. On top of them, the free draws and roulette. The release of Fini gave us hope that the new brand weapons might just be fun main hands instead of hardcore grid pieces. And by taking a small gamble against the Gacha Devil, it might take less than a year to catch up on a single primal element, as long as the player cannot keep its unwavering determination. For now, two Rafists with an attack awakening and a Wilhelm Militis might ease his pain, but Gwen Magna might be for the better. Two Grimny Harps, one spoon to max crit on double Tiamat, with an assortment of guns, fists, and raw axes for Tia and Lucy 250 when heals and clears are needed more than raw damage. The silver lining for rescuing Zephyrus is that all three weapons needed are in the Flesh Gala, as priority being Iwia and Charlotta, followed closely by Kaguya. Better start saving, and may Gatchapin bless your rolls, for God knows I have no more blessings to give. Clawing my way back up from the abyss, almost claimed my life. Blinding was the light once I was finally able to breathe some fresh air. And the uncapped Shell Souls, the Xeno, Dark Opus and Harmonia were able to soothe my soul back into a peaceful state. The Hideo Harp and Horus Katana welcomed bonuses for Chege Tech comms. Not much to add here. Little notes had to be added to the Dark Grid as well. Double Pain and Suffering to go along with some Celeste Axes. Next step in the progression, Avatar Staves, Ideal Spines, and then, since I'm sure he had spent his tickets on the Iwia Bigs, the grueling agonized grind awaits him. One of those bows can be bought for pendants each month, and he better start soon, or even a single one can alleviate the pain anima animus will subject those who farm it. When it comes to summons, the magna ones should be easy enough to max, at least before transcendence. Belial is an important one too, but before spending stones on it, it's better to wait for the roulette to come to an end. Bahamut has already devoured three eternity sands. No more. A better use for those lies in Lucifer, if not the Magna Six Stars themselves. Then 
the most important ones will be the damage boosting Arcarum. Let this star guide you through the Uratan fight, then follow it up with Death or the Hangman. There's no need to read too much in this suggestion. Many were the characters he had been leaving behind. Perhaps he didn't know leveling them up would eventually bring him crystals. Not many, 5 per level, 54 milestones, but it's still free currency for very minimal investment. Next, a warning about grid building. That is something that has to be done with a purpose. At low rank, when most of what you do is full auto magna raids, it doesn't really matter, but the moment you want to play more efficiently, you start looking into short manual bursts to hit honor quotas. That is where Relic Buster's full team ignition starts becoming useful, as well as builds up Call plus Luchador Tag Team or Triple Zero Call with the Dark Opus main hand that has an echo chain in it, so the three teammates after MC get double strike. Each setup needing some grid changes to make the best of it as well. And so, to make an example, I put something together. First, a series of generic grids to start full auto in Magna 2 and any upgrades with. They will all require more work and have some weapons swapped out eventually. But it's a start. Then, something to farm events with. Without 10 Eternals, it's going to be hard to do zero button. But Relic Buster is always there. Remember, you need to farm 900 host mats from the very hard raid and then burn them on the extreme to complete 20 boxes. Lastly, farming. The game normally allows you to be in up to 3 raids at the same time, but the queue only holds 5 before you have to go check the rewards. This can be circumvented if you keep multiple game windows open and it tends to speed up the grind a bit. Unlocking Magna 2 Pro Skips takes 50 clears of each raid. This should alleviate the pain. And so I left him with a small note on which were the most important steps to take next before sending him on his way, praying for his fate to be more merciful in the future. With this storm coming down, I guess you'll set off on your own journey once more, though I extend the same prayer to you as well. Should the road lead you this way again, make sure to stop by once more. Ciao!